it's time to start a new project and for anyone that doesn't recognize this it's an Osborne OCC1 portable computer. Uh, it's uh, portable in the sense that you can move it it's not something you'd really want to carry around for any length of time um, but it is an interesting machine and uh, it should be quite an interesting project. Uh, I bought this off eBay and uh, as ever it turned up damaged I did specifically ask the uh, seller to uh, package it very carefully because it was going to be restored um, but he just chucked it in the box with a very thin single layer of packing material in a very small box and so needless to say turned up uh, with some damage uh, seems to be fairly typical these days um, and you can tell looking at the condition this is in it's absolutely filthy um, that um, this was not really a loved or cared for machine um, personally I could not bring myself to ship something in this state I would at the very least have to give it a cursory uh, clean even, even if it was just chiseling off the lumps of dirt but um, it is what it is and uh, hopefully this should be an interesting repair project uh, if you've never seen one of these they are uh, quite an interesting machine because of their construction so firstly it's kind of a suitcase style uh, enclosure and it has a couple of uh, catches on the top and this section that's uh, the cover is also the keyboard so we'll get this opened up and as you can see quite a nice uh, looking unit um, it obviously has uh, damage it's I don't know if this was um, damaged before it was sent um, but the unit does rattle now there's something loose inside I'm hoping it's not the neck of the tube that snapped off I don't think it is normally if that happens you can see some damage to the phosphor uh, but um, unusually for me what I'm going to do with this is actually switch it on and see what happens uh, I know it's been switched on the uh, listing showed it powered up um, but I don't know if it sustained uh, any further serious damage in transit and whether it will still do the same thing so I'll get um, the power cord connected and uh, we'll see what happens when we try to apply power I've got the power cord connected really is a bit of a horror show in the back um, I won't show you that so it put you off your uh, dinner um, but it's connected to power I'll try and power it up and we'll see what happens Okay, well we've got a startup beep, so something's running. And we've actually got something on the display. It's going to move the light back out of the way. It's obviously power supply issues with this. We'll see if it can respond to the key. So it's responding to the key. It did uh, change the brightness of the screen. I don't have the disk for this, unfortunately. I'm um, currently searching for some. It's not going to do much until we get some software for it. Okay, um, we are getting the startup screen. It's very distorted, so I suspect there's a power supply issue with this, and uh, more than likely it will explode before too much longer. So I'm going to power it off. Uh, we'll get the case off, uh, take a look inside. I may scrape some of the dirt out, it is uh, absolutely disgusting in the back, so um, I won't subject you to that, but uh, I'll clean the worst out. I won't clean it properly, um, but we'll get the cover off have a look inside and uh, see what we're up against. I've got no idea if the drives work, I don't know how well this runs and as I say until I get some software for it uh, we won't know if it can do much. What I will be able to do without the software is put a disk in, it won't know it's the wrong disk until it's tried to read it and we will at least be able to uh, see if it's going through the motions and trying to actually read the disk. I won't do that now, I don't know what condition these decided to turn it off it was starting to do strange things um, I don't know what condition the drives are in so um, 
I don't want to damage a disc for no reason. So we'll get the cover off and uh, go from there. So I've removed the outer covers and it was absolutely filthy. All manner of dirt and debris fell out of this and uh, it clearly has been stored in a very dirty environment. There's also signs of liquid damage so uh, hopefully that hasn't done too much. Um, next step is to get the major assemblies out and although it powered up I suspect this wouldn't properly boot from floppy disk looking inside the drives uh, there's no way those drives are going to work in their current condition uh, so the next thing is to get it stripped down into its major components and then we'll start uh, inspecting those and seeing exactly uh, what repairs are required there are bits that are loose inside it uh, rattled a lot when I was moving it around so I'm not quite sure what they are yet I haven't found them I can just hear them moving so uh, hopefully it's nothing too serious we know the tube works it uh, came on um, but uh, possibly it's uh, capacitors having uh, popped or uh, something of that nature or it could even be bits of the plastic case that have snapped off but uh, we'll try and dig them out and see what we can find I've got the unit completely dismantled into its major assemblies and uh, this is the main board as you can see doesn't actually look too bad just dirty and uh, don't know how well this will work like I said it uh, as you saw it seems to boot up uh, to the startup screen what it does beyond that um, we don't know we'll have to uh, find that out later the two drives um, they don't look too bad inside the um, right hand one the head doesn't move but I think it's just congealed grease it just needs a strip down and clean uh, the bearings don't feel too bad on this one the bearings on the left hand drive I think are shot they need replacing various bits and pieces were floating around the inside of the machine so I need to find out where these come from some of these are just parts of the case um, moulding that have just dropped out uh, so I can refit those the main chassis itself actually not too bad it's not as bad as I expected it's just dirty um, but not too much damage a little bit uh, chipped here and there but nothing that can't be repaired fairly easily the monitor assembly again it's quite a nice little assembly this um, and it's not too bad a bit dusty but uh, doesn't look too bad there's a couple of suspect looking caps on that board that I'll be replacing and uh, just give it its usual clean of course as you can see absolutely filthy uh, the main culprit seems to be as ever our reefer caps on the power supply uh, a couple have already exploded and uh, there was evidence on the if I turn this over you can see the usual telltale signs of reefer caps having let go there's three on here I can see so far that have failed so there's one here one here one here and they're all split open and at least two of these uh, larger electrolytics uh, that you probably can't see very well but the um, plug on the end of the cap has pushed out of this one and this one so I'll change all the caps on this um, if two have gone chances are the rest aren't far behind that may even be what was causing the odd display um, but it did look like the um, uh, display was about to uh, go off which is why I quickly turned it off and most likely that that's what was uh, the cause uh, okay so uh, this will be the starting point and um, all I'm going to do is start with the power supply clean up the chassis and then go through all the parts and uh, reassemble test them and um, by the time we get it all reassembled hopefully we'll have a working machine and uh, also by then hopefully I'll have a set of boot discs uh, that I can use to properly test this doesn't look too bad uh, the outer case um, is probably the worst um, part of it as far as uh, the general appearance is concerned the inside doesn't look anywhere near as bad there are signs that um, it's got some water damage in here and for some reason all the screws seem to be very loose I don't think anyone's been in here um, it's possible they have but every single one I haven't loosened these but every single one is loose so um, not quite sure what's going on there whether it's just the plastics compressed over time and left these screws loose but you can see the corrosion in here is fairly bad 
um, but luckily it doesn't seem to have eaten away too much material. Uh, the inside of the monitor housing, uh, again it's dirty and it's rusty so I've got a feeling this has been stored somewhere damp. Um, it's not too bad, it's just uh, rust so um, luckily it hasn't gone too deep so most of the material is still there. Um, the real issue with this sort of machine is what the corrosion will have done to the uh, disk drives. They are the part of the machine that is most susceptible to uh, damage through corrosion. But uh, we'll find that as we progress. So in the next video we'll work our way starting with the power supply. Probably put a dummy load on it to make sure it works the way it's supposed to before we start putting it back together. Uh, this jumper by the way is just for 115 volt operation. Um, but we're using it on a 230 volt, so uh, the, the wiring loom connects directly to the 230 volt connection. Okay, so next video we'll start working on uh, fixing all the faults.